I'm Zachary Fowler. And I'm the Wooded Beardsman. And this is the Wilderness Living Challenge, Maine. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> the point of the challenge is to gain or maintain our body weight while eating nothing but wild foods for seven days. Last time we did it in Canada. This time, he's come down to join me in the coastal state of Maine. Up here at Dick's Sporting Goods here in Augusta. When I went up to see Chris in Canada, he took me to all the typical uh, uh, Canadian places to buy fishing gear and hunting licenses. So I'm taking him to Dick's. <laughs> Battling three reed raspy. Oh, I like the raspy. And you good with the mouth collar? I've never used one. No? Yeah, I'm gonna have to get one. You can teach me how to do it. I will. All right. It's a whole thing. It's a whole art. Maybe get um, get a different one. Get a different one? Yeah. Okay. What's the difference? Uh, I don't know. This one's if this will be raspier. It'll sound like an older hen. Is it, uh, <laughs> nope. I'll be I'll be a young hen. It'll be sexier. <laughs> a nice sexy young More hen. More spelt. It's so like deeper or like a throatier, throatier, I guess. And we'll, we'll see if there's a difference. See who, if you've never used one, it's probably not going to sound like a turkey at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to sound like a dying turkey. Uh, uh, uh. All right, back to gloves. What else do we need? Uh, hunting license. Hunting license. All right, so I know it's a little costly, but the bucket seals really nicely. And so I couldn't resist buying the Yeti bucket. There we go. We didn't get to film much in the store because, well, I said they'd kick us out. So, well, we got what we needed, minus Chris's fishing license. We got the dip net, and turns out fishing game is just down the road. So we're gonna try and get our fishing license there. They put all his info in the computer, and they said, you don't actually exist <laughs> in a realm that we can give you a fishing license. And he said, I exist. I am real. I am the Wooded Beardsman. Don't you know who I am? We have zip codes. And no, was, we have postal codes. You guys have zip codes. Yeah, so it wouldn't register that he uh, exists on this plane of existence. So <laughs> we're off to get his fishing license at the at the source. You get the claiming license here too? Uh, I don't know. We'll check. If we can, that'd be great. Possibly getting a hunting license. I'm from Canada, so I know it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah, oh, keep forgetting I changed He's applying for citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so they rejected his plea for political asylum. So he's going to have to go back to Canada at some point. But they did give him a hunting and fishing license. So we're going to go and test those things out. See if we can not actually put something in the, in the back of the truck. Something to eat. In my belly. In our bellies. We're here in Gardner. We found access to the river in a different location than I was when I was up here the other day with Chris scouting. Um, seeing if we can find a spot where the alewives are trying to get up in here if they've come this far up the river. These little choke points might be a good spot to uh, harvest our alewife. Really? Yeah, right here. Oh, look at them all. Look at them all, right in there. Mm-hmm. You got your waders? I got mine. Dude, all in there. Look at them. There they are. You see the little oh. sparkles? Little glints and stuff? All right, so all we have to do is put our net. All we have to do is dip them out of here when they try to run up. Or we might be able to just walk right over to that log and dip right in there. That, actually, the last time I wore them was the Puddle Lake Adventure. And that's where I got that hole. I had to make, I had to do duct tape patch to get home. No way. Up the river, four hours or longer. I forget what it was. It was a long ways. And the duct tape held up, so for the most part, near the end it was washing off and getting pretty cold, but made it home. Nice. That's all that matters. I don't got waders, so hopefully the boots are enough. I think I can get them from shore. If not, he's got his on. You can scare them into me. <laughs> Since go. we're not allowed to hold each other's net. <laughs> it's only one person that's true 25 so if I can't get them I'm gonna have to pull up my pant legs and get in there it must be operated by one person it must be operated by one person we can't hold hands and do it you have to operate alone while dip netting your alewife 
Coincidentally, marriage rules are the same here in Maine. Must only be operated by one person with one wife. That's an angry sea. Don't want to fall in that. Poles extended. You want to go in first? You first. I'll give you first dip since you're visiting. All right, I got first dip. That and he's got the waders on, so I'll find out exactly how deep it is. This may be harder than we thought. He's standing here, but I can see. You can't see it on camera. They're all like going like this around him. They're all right here. Now they're going like. <laughs> All right, that's how you do it. it seemed like it was going to be easy and then I had to back off a bit, but there you go. How many? I don't know, like a dozen? A dozen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's not going to take long. How many do we have before? Eight. Eight. So that's nine. Ready for smoking. That's the idea. Or lobster bait. How many did you get in total? I got four shy of a limit, so 21. 21? 21, I think I got count on that. Looks like a big minnow, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> like a big shiner or something. Yeah, a big shiner. It's got soft fins, so. Not like a uh, bass or anything like that. It's not but they got this here. sharp bottom. You feel that? Oh yeah. They kind of got like a sharp bottom edge. Cool. Well, that's all the fun we have out the river today. I'm not going to get my chance to dip. I tried in the shallows, but he has waders on so we can get out to where they were. If we had more time, we'd scoot down the river and try some other spots where there's some choke points and I could nail some and he could get the last four for his limit. But uh, this was more of a scouting mission today. We got to get back. We have other things to do like finishing the adventure vehicle. So we're down here where the alewives are running in the St. George River, which is like 10 minutes from my house, but we're dipping 45 minutes away from here because this whole St. George River is protected by the fishery because all the alewives are owned by the town. It's something that's been happening for hundreds of years. It's grandfathered in. So they count all the ones that make it past this. So you're not allowed to take alewives out of the St. George Rivers, even the 30 or 40 miles of river that go beyond this um, are, are untouchable. There's no permission for that. But the lobstermen and other people, you can come down and with permission, get them dipped out of this trap here and they divvy them up and you can purchase them or whatever. Um, but we are not doing that. We want to do it ourselves, so that's why we're going 45 minutes from here. But we thought we'd show you what it looks like when they're pulling them out of here. While we're waiting to see the alewives yanked out, he's practicing his turkey call. You gotta get seated properly.
Try to get a gobble of it. I ain't having it. It's not raspy enough. <laughs> It I, was, think, I think the truck gave us away, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> Thought we try instead of the instead of shooting one, we see if we can call it over and get it to jump in the passenger seat. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah. Look at all that food. <laughs> it's all a product of the land. We just didn't get it all ourselves. We, we might be too full to do a Maine Wilderness Living Challenge. I don't know. This is a lot of food here. This is what I eat over like two days. <laughs> oh, some leftovers for tomorrow morning's breakfast. That'll work. Ale, ale wives and steak for breakfast. Grace. Oh, that's a good idea. Mixing the uh, stuff in with the rice. Yeah, soak it up. All right, let's. Uh, Lord, thank you for this food and this adventure, and Chris making it down here safely. Help us to have an awesome time out adventuring once we hit our seven-day start, and uh, keep us safe. In Jesus' name, Amen. Dig in. I just, it's just full. Like little hair sized bones. Skin bones. Oh man. Well, that's a disappointment. I don't remember it being like that when I ate them last time. That's bad. They're just throughout? Mm hmm. What if you swallow them? As long as they don't get caught. You just eat them. What you could do with this. I would just eat them, but it's like hard to get your throat to swallow or your mouth full of little twigs. It's like. Yeah, you gotta avoid the big ones for sure. Yeah, we might be having to just have fish soup through the whole thing and just drink the nutrients out of it. Drink the broth? Yeah. Back to the drawing board. Like just the heads. Eat the brains and the eyeballs. Well, you know what? We're gonna use them to catch lobsters. That might be the better way to convert them into something edible. Yeah, and I mean we could, you know what I mean? we could go catfishing too. Mm-hmm. Right? But converting them into lobsters sounds like a better <laughs> idea at this point to me. <laughs> if we can get enough. Yeah. I don't know anything about trapping lobsters, so I don't know if that's productive or... It, it's productive as long as, kind of like the way these were running. If the uh, lobsters are moving inland enough, then we can get to them. All right, well, there you have it. Our first experiment with the Alewife. Not so successful. I think that's enough for us. I'm gonna eat my steak, enjoy ourselves, and uh, tune in for day one of the Wilderness Living Challenge starting on June 21st, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be moving up to the shelter in the woods and staying out there while we have our adventures each day getting something new wild to eat. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Fowler out. Oh man. My asparagus touched the L-wife. Now I got, it's got bones on it.